In this video, we are going to work on wiring the 8284 IC and then also in the process see how we uh, make up a circuit on some other part of the page uh, which has got to connect to some part of uh, another particular portion of the circuit in that page. So let's first quickly wire this up. So wiring up has got a couple of facets like in here we see that there are a couple of pins which are going to be outputs that will connect to something else on another page then there is this x1 which is going to be the um, input that would be taken from that output which we were sending out of the uh, xtal page the xtal out so the way that we link all this is use the same names for the connectors so if we go to the uh, one for the 8284, let's do the outputs first. So again, we will place ports and since in on this page it would be outputs, we will use the output port type and let's just treat it as single output and not bidirectional. So we will use these and we will use five of them. So one, two, three, four and five and each one of them would be named uh, exactly as the corresponding names used on the connector page so we would have 8284 underscore the corresponding signal name so let's go and name them so this would be 8284 p clock then the next one would be 8284 clock then we would have the 82 84 ready and then 8284 OSC and then 8284 reset so that's about the output part and after that we'll simply link them together and that's done for the output now let's after this one think about the input part so the input would be the XTAL out that's what is going to come into this page and to X1 so we would search for an input port and let's see the input port would be we can use this one and we'll just rotate it so let's rotate that and one more time and then we can put it against x1 and we would name that the same as what was there in that other page so x tal out and connect it so rest what remains is connecting the rest portions of the page now if you go through how 8284s are wired together, if you are interested, you will see that there are several one of the pins which in the general case are left unconnected. So we would put a no connect or NC against them. So those pins are the C sin, the F slash C bar, and then the two AEN, say AEN one bar and AEN two bar. The rest of the pins in this block are all going to be connected to ground. So what we are left with is uh, VCC, ground, the reset input and the rest of the pins. So as we have seen before, we place the ground somewhere towards the bottom of the page and then place a supply somewhere to the top of the page. It looks good if you align these two so hopefully they get aligned and then again this VCC needs to be named as in all other pages as 5 volts and then we connect them to where they need to go so this needs to come to VCC and then this needs to connect to ground now we since we are done with that the next thing that we will do is uh, take care of the rest of the things so like I said in here apart from the reset everything else is going to be connected to the ground so we just take a wire and then we start putting them together so we have the ready one the ready two and then the EFI these are all connected to ground so we did that and uh, x2 is just going to be a uh, no connect 
copies that as well now as we can see that uh, everything else is done apart from the reset part so reset what we need to do is design the circuit with a resistor and a capacitor in there but as we can see this particular thing does not have much space here where we can fit it so what we can do is we can draw it elsewhere so let's try putting in a resistor uh, this one and let's make it look like how you draw them so probably rotate it and place it here and then put a capacitor and place it here and we would need a switch as well and switch let's see we will be able to do with a SPST or a SPST with two poles yeah that's what it is and again we will rotate this a little bit and place it somewhere here now let's wire that up once again we would need a ground and a VCC we can introduce them again uh, towards the lower part of the circuit in here and then the VCC towards the upper part of the circuit in here and then we just need to wire it up so let's do that Now let us uh, name these or uh, give values to these resistors for our reference so that we can come back and understand later on what values need to be put in there. And now from this particular point the reset signal should be connected to this NRES. So instead of drawing a long wire that goes and connects here what we can do is we can use a technique called net naming. So what we will do is we will draw a single unending wire which you can draw with just taking it out and then double clicking to make it end and then use this which is to place a net alias and we will name it as something let's say n reset and you can change the direction of how it comes up so here we just want it horizontally so zero degrees fine so we will put the name against this one n reset one we, once we are done with this, anywhere else if we draw a wire and then name that alias as the same as this one, then those two would get implicitly connected. So that is what we would use here. We would draw out a wire and then name it as N reset again. So that's it. That doing this means that this particular pin now is connected to this particular point so this way you can do management within the circuit also another thing like I mentioned that you need to have decoupling capacitors in your design so that your power supply is smoothed out so that is always connected between VCC and ground and in general what happens is there's a a bigger capacitor and then there is a smaller capacitor which are connected in parallel to achieve that effect so let us introduce two capacitors in this circuit um, let's say we keep one here and then one here and um, what we will do is now we are done with that we will go and give this capacitor a value of let's say for example um, for now we are just using one microfarad and then for the other one we are using let's say 0 0.01 uh, microfarad okay so these values are not constant you can use other values but there are some recommended ranges which I will provide later on but for now we can just connect these to the supply and the other end to the ground so that filters the input supply and gives you a comparatively smoother output so that's what is here so with that we come to the end of how you would wire the clock circuit up so right as of this moment you have all of the three different modules of the circuit all populated in their own sheets and done the proper way now the next thing that we will do is uh, this or oh, one thing I forgot this one needs to be named to 5 volts okay so now we are done 
So now what we would do is we would see how from the pages that you have made, you can go back and create the hierarchical block for yourself easily. So we would do that in the video that's coming up. So let's end this and see you in the next one.